Politicians urging tolerance after two Muslim women wearing full headdress were refused rides on Auckland buses. The bus drivers claimed they had a phobia of masks. The Saudi Arabia Consulate General suggested it wasn't masks that they were phobic about. This is a hot issue in France where the face veils have now been banned. In Australia, New South Wales police have just been granted the power to remove the face veils in certain circumstances. And here, well, John Key said today we live in a tolerant and inclusive society. And Phil Goff, Phil Goff agreed, saying it's live and live let live in New Zealand. But are we tolerant of Muslim face fails? Are we as tolerant, for example, as our political leaders like to think? Cabal Live's Jane Soons and Mihi Narangi Forbes tried to find out by wearing a full burqa for a day. In an effort to test our society's tolerance, we headed for a costume shop to hire a pair of burqas. Point being to see New Zealand through someone else's eyes. The experiment had an immediate response and it felt like everyone was looking at us. Some smiled, some gawked. Many had a double take. We visited four banks to exchange money. Only one was able to exchange our dirhams into New Zealand dollars. And when a photo identification was required, there was quite rightly some discussion about how the teller would be able to match our faces to our photos. So this is you. Oops. Okay. What's the etiquette? I mean, you have no thing. How do I ID you? They were polite and helpful and in the end exchanged the money without asking us to remove our veils. We browsed through jewellery shops and decided to look at a bit of fashion. Neither one of us expected this. In some countries, they take advantage of us. So after causing quite a stir, we quickly moved on. We tried a bus ride, which all went smoothly. But on board, none of the passengers made eye contact, so no change there. Then a stroll around the viaduct, where we were left feeling like complete outsiders. We ended up having coffee at a cafe, where we quickly discovered drinking or eating in a burqa is best left to those who know how. Mihi Forbes joins us live in the studio. What was it like, Mihi, wearing one of those for a day? Yeah, it was, it was really, really different. And I guess the, the biggest thing for me is that communication. I didn't feel like I could communicate with anyone because we talked with our eyes and our hands and our eyebrows in New Zealand and all anyone could see was my eyes. And um, so when women were walking past and smiling at me... They, so people did smile at you? There were, yeah, there were a few that kind of looked down and smiled, but right. they couldn't see my response. Yeah. They didn't know what I was saying or doing, and that was quite alienating, really, for me. So what was your response to that? Did you... I mean, obviously, you, if you smiled back, no-one could see, did no. you? So what did you do? We just look. Yeah. Because well, then, no, and then after a while, with, with everyone looking at you, you just kind of put your head down because then you feel like you don't want to talk to anyone because everyone's just staring at you. And communicating is really difficult. It was it, for me, it was really difficult um, experiment to communicate. And so in the end, Jane and I, who are usually talk a lot, yes, chatterboxes, yeah, <laughs> we didn't talk much at all. We just yeah. kind of got on with it and did got on with the day. Yeah. yeah. What was the response from, from, from members of well, a, a, a wonderfully cosmopolitan inclusive city? And I, you know, I say that as a Wellingtonian who's moved to Auckland and found it very rich in that respect. What was the response from Aucklanders? Well, many people just carried on their business and didn't look, but then there were people who stared, they were curious, and then others that looked away straight away because they were kind of embarrassed that they were staring. And then there were some that were angry, like the couple, you know, the woman you saw on the tape there. Mm, mm. They were kind so of offended so that she, I looked different. She, she didn't want you in her shop. No. And she made that very clear that you weren't welcome in her shop That's because right. of your and face. And that was from, we were on the outside of her shop and we had just looked at the rack outside and we were kind of looking through that. And she came immediately to the door and just stared at us and then said no. Mm. And, you know, there were people that looked like that. So, yeah, I guess um, the whole Burka experience was, for me, I felt a little bit alone in there. Mm. And um, I didn't feel like I could, could communicate very well. 
So, so, so you felt disconnected from mm. the... Yeah, 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 yeah. Which must make it tough being a woman who wears a full face veil in a society where overwhelmingly people don't. That's right, yeah. yeah. And, you can, and I could feel that that, that must be... You know, you'd, ha you'd want to hang out with people who <laughs> wear burqas because, you know, you've got so many things in common and you can just... The, the eating and the drinking for me, I thought... I, hadn't, I haven't actually seen women in burqas drink or eat. And I thought, when we sat down to get a coffee, I thought... <laughs> How are you going to ah. go about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, me. It's a fascinating experiment. So, just one thing. In short, were people intolerant? Some. Other, other than, other than the, the, the lady in the shop? Some. Not really. They were just curious. Nee Forbes, thanks so much, Mickey. Really appreciate it.